The Fed spoke on interest rates this week. Cautiously optimistic I am. Walmart CEO talks about customer spending and behavior. We have two really big AI news updates. And we have a new study on the entrepreneurialism of Gen Z. Okay, welcome back to the Hairs of Strong News and what does it have to do with you? I deliver weekly news that is relevant to you, your business, and your clients. From economic to tech and other juicy stories, I will curate and editorialize current news that you can better understand your business and customers while also giving you current events to discuss with your clients. Let's dive right in. Okay, so j Powell speaks on the economy. If you are just tuning in and you don't know who j Powell is, he is the head of the Federal Reserve, which is our U.S. Central Bank. The Fed has control over interest rates and the money supply. Their job is to keep unemployment as low as possible and inflation around 2%. Now, restrictive monetary policy, which is what we have right now, so the monetary policy is tight, meaning that there's not a lot of money in the system and uh, interest rates are high, which means it's hard to borrow. It's more expensive to borrow. Well, this has the psychological effect of spreading a scarcity mindset. This scarcity mindset can cause a business to wither away and die. The psychological effect impacts customers too because they want to hold on to more of their money, which means less services. So let me share my screen because I want to show you something. And uh, if you're listening on podcast, just follow along and um, I'm going to read everything. So... You don't have to click the links in the description below, but you can if you want to. Okay, so what I have here is an article by Sarah Rathner, Rathner, and it's on nerdwallet.com, and the title is A Scarcity Mindset Can Cost You Mentally and Financially. Scary economic news is everywhere, but adopting a scarcity mindset can get in the way of making wise money choices. All right, so I'm just going to read two paragraphs. Today, this fear of scarcity plays out differently due to rising prices, a volatile stock market, and whispers of a looming recession. We've simply rolled one set of worries into another, continuing to assume all our resources are scarce, whether that's true for us or not. If the current situation has you avoiding any long-term planning or fearing spending any money, even on things you need, you're experiencing a scarcity mindset. I'm going to say that again. If the current situation has you avoiding any long-term planning or fear spending money, if you're afraid of spending money, even on things you need, then you're experiencing a scarcity mindset. This basically means that Sorry, uh, this basically means you have your resources like money, food, and employment opportunities as limited. So you think you've got very limited stuff. And when you're concerned about access to these things, it's natural to want to grab onto whatever you can. Okay. So what I want to do is just point out and explain what is the scarcity mindset, how it's a psychological situation, and um, it can really cause you to destroy your business. Now, you also, it's but it's like a double thing. You know, it's like your scarcity mindset, but it's also, what about your customers? So if your customers are uh, experiencing any fear coming on, then they might tighten up their spending. So they're tightening up a customer's spending looks like maybe spacing out appointments or uh, questioning the value or thinking about maybe lowering the maintenance. And so having conversations about value, uh, having ideas for how they can lower their maintenance, you know, it's just a, it's just a season we're in right now of fear. And um, so if the customer is having fear instead of losing them, my opinion is that you should be prepared with with some tricks up your sleeve for how to reduce some maintenance, you know, maybe, I don't know, think of uh, something that I'll do is I'll have somebody come in for like a base bump and to stretch out their highlights in between visits. So they're still coming in, they're still spending money, which increases, we know every time they come into the salon, it increases their customer loyalty. And, uh, and we, it gets revenue in our pocket, but it also like gives them 
what they need in this moment. And talking to them about value is also important. All right. And all right, Co. let's keep on moving. I'm going to play a little short little video for you. It's just a couple minutes. I'm going to explain it as I go. Okay. So recent indicators suggest that growth of economic activity has slowed substantially from the outsized pace seen in the third quarter. Even so, GDP is on track to expand around 2.5% for the year as a whole, bolstered by strong consumer demand as well as improving supply conditions. After picking somewhat over the, up somewhat over the summer, activity in the housing sector has flattened out and remains well below the levels of a year ago, largely reflecting higher mortgage rates. Higher interest rates also appear to be weighing on business fixed investment. In our summary of economic projections, committee participants revised up their assessments of GDP growth this year, but expect growth to cool, with the median projection falling to 1.4% next year. The labor market remains tight, but supply and demand conditions continue to come into better balance. Over the past three months, payroll job gains averaged 204,000 jobs per month, a strong pace that is nevertheless below that seen earlier in the year. Okay, so what he's saying is that uh, things are slowing down a little bit. Um, yeah, things are normalizing. There's not like a ton of uh, scarcity in, in uh, employers. Like one of the big challenges businesses have had is that there's more jobs than there are people looking for job. There was two jobs per person last year. Now that I think it was what 1.4 I reported last week or something like that. So it's like a significant drop in people available out there for jobs. Um, so that kind of, that can, that can, uh, cause the costs of things to go up as the people, as companies compete for wages or compete for employees, they re have to raise wages. And, um, and it also, the interest rates he's saying is hurting, is making it hard for businesses to expand and people to buy. It also means that buy their homes. So like it also means that people aren't selling their homes because they're locked into these super low interest rates. And, uh, and that is all having an impact on the economy. All right, let's keep going. The unemployment rate remains low at 3.7%. Strong job creation has been accompanied by an increase in the supply of workers. The labor force participation rate has moved up since last year, particularly for individuals aged 25 to 54 years, and immigration has returned to pre-pandemic levels. Nominal wage growth appears to be easing and job vacancies have declined. Although the jobs to workers gap has narrowed, labor demand still exceeds the supply of available workers. FOMC participants expect the rebalancing in the labor market to continue, easing upward pressures on inflation. The median unemployment rate projection in the SEP rises somewhat from 3.8% at the end of this year to 4.1% at the end of next year. Inflation has eased over the past year, but remains above our longer run goal of 2%. Okay. So, so what he's saying here is that the unemployment and employment is starting to normalize, which we just kind of we just kind of touched on and talked about. And uh, labor participation has gone up, so more people are employed. Uh, in terms of in terms of like, because so unemployment numbers can be a little skewed. And it's kind of like a technicality thing, but um, labor participation means the people who are working people, are they working? But that does, unemployment means how many people are filling out unemployment applications. So some people are unemployed, but they just gave up and stopped looking. And so that's why labor participation is important. So you want, you want low unemployment and you want high labor participation which means everybody who wants a job is working with very few people out of work so what he's saying is more people are working um and at the same time more people are unemployment has gone up which is really interesting but he also said that immigration is back to pre-pandemic levels so you got higher participation rates which means that more people are working 
and you have more people coming into the country, which are probably looking for jobs. And but then you also have unemployment ticking up. So it sounds like they're saying there's a normalization of conditions. And uh, that's what leads to. Uh, and if you looked at the stock market, uh, you would have seen the stock market has had went up after this talk. And um, it's because it sounds very bullish. So there's just a few more, a couple more, like less than a minute left. Okay. Based on the consumer price index and other data, we estimate that total PCE prices rose 2.6% over the 12 months ending in November. And that excluding the volatile food and energy categories, core PCE prices rose 3.1%. The lower inflation readings over the past several months are welcome, but we will need to see further evidence to build confidence that inflation is moving down sustainably toward our goal. Longer term inflation expectations appear to remain well anchored, as reflected in a broad range of surveys of households, businesses, and forecasters, as well as measures from financial markets. As is evident from the SEP, we anticipate that the process of getting inflation all the way to 2% will take some time. The median projection in the SEP is 2.8% this year, falls to 2.4% next year, and reaches 2% in 2026. The Fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate to promote maximum employment and stable prices for the American people. My colleagues and I are acutely aware that high inflation imposes significant hardship. Okay, I think that uh, that does it. So what he's saying in the very end there is that uh, on um, uh, inflation is also coming down and they expect it to return back to normal in 2026. But uh, he also says later on that um, there may be a there may be a rate cut next year. So that could ease things a little bit if the rates come down i think what i'm reading is 1.5% that'll bring um uh lent, um sorry uh, mortgage rates down below 6% which is a historically good number somewhere around right around 5 under 6 uh percent is speculated uh, as being the the rate at which Homes will start to move. Businesses won't feel like uh, expanding their business is expensive. It'll also signal to the market that it, it's fear time is over, which should signal to people that it's time to spend money again. Now, whether or not the inflation stays low is a whole other conversation, but we're just trying to get through this initial this initial jump here. So. I would love to know what you think. Um, please leave a link in the description below to jump over to the Instagram um, version of this where we're, where we're having a conversation about it. Uh, what do you think uh, this means for you? Now, before you jump to thinking about what this means to you, I think it's important to listen to or hear from one other person. And that other person is Walmart. So let me... This article is on Yahoo Finance, originally on Fortune.com. Uh, Walmart customers are behaving so strangely, it's making bosses sit up in their chairs. And this is by Eleanor Pringle. Okay, so I am going to read two paragraphs for you. So it looks like Rainey, R-A-I-N, yeah, John David Rainey is Walmart's CFO. They were talking to Morgan Stanley. And it says, on the call in mid-November, Rainey first hinted at shifting customer behavior, saying, we see our customers showing ongoing discretion and seeking value to manage within their household budget. This week, Rainey sought to reassure with Reuters, reporting, he said, the anomalous behavior of shoppers are and deflationary price pressures haven't prompted Walmart, a $415 billion company, to rethink its long-term plans. So basically saying people look like they're starting to tighten their belt, seek out greater value, be uh, be more discerning. 
All right, so here you go. Customers are increasingly price sensitive. Customers may still be spending big in mass. The 2023 Black Friday period broke records after Americans shelled out $9.8 billion on goods. But individuals are getting increasingly wary of the price tags on day-to-day items. I don't know about you, but I've started to hear my customers talk about about you know all this talk about inflation and like and recession even though the news looks like it's trending good the fear is starting to set in with my clientele and my clientele is in DC and Georgetown and um, these are the people that are they're making good money and they're start they're starting to be fearful that's my experience what is your experience you know what demographic or income bracket are your customers and are they fearful or are they excited so we have mixed economic news here we have the head of the federal reserve telling us that uh, things look good so they're cautiously optimistic so like it looks like in the future we might be able to lower the rates to help you kind of like expand and grow because you know think money will get cheaper makes it easier to grow and expand and it also gives people the feeling that it's safe to spend their money and uh, however this is saying right now walmart which is massive They really have their thumb on the pulse, and they're saying that customers are starting to be more scrutinous, and I would agree with that. So I personally am cautiously optimistic. Um, I am working hard to be aware of the scarcity mindset. I don't want to do that. I'm still trying to grow, but I'm trying to grow in ways that don't necessarily cost me money. So like, what are the different ways that you can build your business increase without spending money? Maybe do some collaborations. Uh, that's a that's a really good one. Or do some photo shoots, which is another collaboration, Where unless you're a photographer. Um, what else could you do? You could book uh, you could start making videos and making content and um there's there's ways to help your business without spending a bunch of money um or building something you know maybe like i just built a cl- a course and uh, i'm going to start started selling it and that is something that i can do to generate more revenue and it doesn't cost me more money you know like the beauty business brunch the you know the conference here for the be- for beauty business in dc that we host once a year it, that costs a lot of money to put on you know so that doing something if i'm going to pick something to do which yes we are going to do it then i'm going to right now i'm really trying to work on building stuff that way when the fear kind of subsides then i have something that i've been already building to then kind of sell and like release to the world of you know my customers or the industry or whatever okay let's move on um next article is about the entrepreneurialism of gen z it's titled many gen z jeers Sorry, men. Oh my gosh. Many Gen Zers think the best way to build wealth is to be their own boss. Instagram's year end trend report finds. All right. So I'm going to just scroll to the bottom here. And I'm going to read this two paragraphs. Gen Z carries a mistrust of companies amid a backdrop of will it or won't it recessions. So that all pays in like, is, are we going to have a recession? Now the central bank's saying, I don't know. It looks like we might not have a recession. And Walmart's saying, I don't know. It looks like people are starting to be actually stop spending money. And oh my gosh. Um, however, that'll cause inflation to go down. But could that cause businesses to have to lay people off? I mean, that's the concern here. Okay, so anyway, Gen Z's like, you know what? I don't trust the companies. I'm seeing all this like fear and stuff. So, and they lost it's this thwarted student loan forgiveness. So, they, so like Gen Z and millennials thought that loan forgiveness was going to come around and we wouldn't have those payments that just kicked in and general economic fatigue. It says many feel as if the economy game is different than it was for their parents and fear for their financial future. After all, experts say $1 million is no longer enough to retire on. Okay, and now it goes in here to say, while they're still relatively early on in their career tra- trajectory, did you know the youngest Gen Z is 11 years old? So. I think it's important to remember that these are kids. So when they pull them, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Like it gives you direction and idea, but it's not absolute. So you got to kind of be able to sift through the stuff and 
ask yourself, what do you think is going to be sticky? You know, they haven't started earning money. There's inflation and they're seeing what it's like to have to, they saw what it's like to not work and get a check uh, during the pandemic. But now they got to go out and work and like, be responsible and like and it's tough out there to actually work and make money and uh so but that's just not that makes a lot of sense when you consider everything um i'm not here to feel sorry for anybody or make you feel sorry i just think it's very important to understand the psychology of the younger clientele and the younger generation of stylists to help you make better decisions and more informed decisions about your business all right um let's see okay Moving on. Last but not least, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. We got this AI news. This is really interesting. So this is a t- a article on textexplore.com titled Portable Non-Invasive Mind Reading, AI Turns Thoughts into Text. Yes, a device to turn your eye thoughts into text. Mind reading software. What the F? Okay, I'm going to read the two first two paragraphs. In a world first, researchers from the Graphene X UTS Human-Centric Artificial Intelligence Center at the University of Technology, Sydney, have de- developed a portable non-invasive system that can decode silent thoughts and turn them into text. The technology could aid communication for people who are unable to speak due to illness or injury, including stroke or paralysis. It could also enable seamless communication between humans and machines, such as the operation of a bionic arm or robot. So this is amazing because this will help people with disabilities. It's amazing. It's also going to, I don't know, I don't want to be like all weird. So I'm going to digress and not say some kind of the scary stuff that comes with AI. It's kind of exciting, but uh, mind reading tools is crazy. What do you think about it? I This is a great conversation to have with your customers. Okay, last piece. Um, durable cements, $14 million to build bots and other AI tools for small businesses and service industries. This is an article on TechCrunch.com by Ingrid London. I'm going to read you a couple paragraphs here. All right. Durable is a is a startup based out of Vancouver, Canada, has built an AI website creator and a number of AI-powered tools to help small business owners plan, create, and run business apps more easily. Okay. And that's who they are. So what are, okay, Durable's AI-powered website builder aimed at people who either have very rudimentary online presence, if any at all, has already been used to create more than 6 million websites. So here's uh, something you could check out to help you with your business and see if there's any tools there. We have a lot of those traditional companies that have been around for a long time, but with no online presence. So it doesn't sound like you have to be very tech savvy to work with this uh, company and they have no so they're working with people who have no software and no systems and that's a big part of their customer base the plumber the skilled trades the skilled trades that's us the personal trainer a lot of these like one to six person companies just haven't had the time to resource actually build online presence so that's really cool like a lot of ai stuff is out there and um it's really fun and exciting so use the links in the description below to read up more um have a great conversation with your customers uh hope this helps you make better decisions for your future and i hope you have a wonderful week and i'll talk to you later